course. Here we go. We're live. Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome to the Craft Hour with Pink Fresh Studio. Hey, you're my Pink Fresh Studio audience. I'm Jeff, your host. And if you're new here, I want to check in with you. Make sure that you share that you're hashtag new. I want to see it in the comments. We've got an amazing show for you today. Look, she's already here all the way from the other coast, tuned in, woke up and ready to go early in the morning with me and ready to play with some yellow. Please welcome my special guest, Julie Ebersol. Hi, Julie. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Julie Ebersol, um, I have been a fan for a very long time because as you probably hear, whenever people engage with you, write you or talk to you on the socials, you are a natural teacher and you are such a generous educator online. How did you get into this? How did you get into this whole uh, YouTube thing? Where did it all start? Um, well, I, I started working with Ellen Hudson and uh, as a concept artist, creating projects on her blog. And then she said, you know, we need to, we need to start a YouTube channel. Can you do this? <laughs> I was like, uh, oh, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll try. <laughs> and so I just started kind of, okay, you need a camera, you need this, that, and the other. And so I started, you know, doing uh, something, a series called Hello Monday. And um, that's where it kind of started. And I'm still kind of um, a novice when it comes to YouTube because YouTube is like, since we, since we started doing the channel, it has grown um, and gone off in a whole different direction uh, than when we first started because now you can do lives like this and and other things um and so i was just like i kind of like stay in my little this is my lane i'm staying yes. in my lane <laughs> so many of my guests talk about the fact that i asked them to be on camera how do you feel about camera are you feeling good oh, about I'm being front nervous. facing I'm terribly nervous. It's like, do I have a, any chives on my teeth or, right. uh, or do yes. I have like a gray hair springing <laughs> out of the top of my head? Because, you know, I, that happens and, yeah. and there's nobody because to tell what? you and then you see it on camera and you're like, oh my gosh. Because that's real life and we want yeah. real life around here, which is, is exactly what we're here. Hey, we're so glad to have 42 of you and growing. Let's grow this broadcast just a little bit more. Jump on oh my gosh, hit that share people. button. I know we it's going to only get better. It's only going to get more bigger. Than crickets. <laughs> it's more than crickets. I think it's because it's you. You're here. So again, <laughs> hit that share button. Tell your friends on Instagram. Take a picture of you watching the show. Have people come meet Julie and I as we get to know each other and have fun with Pink Fresh Studio products. Again, you're the Pink Fresh Studio audience. And I want to make sure we shout out our moderator in the sky talking to each of you and helping me remotely is Heather Hoffman. Of course, Hi, one Heather. of my amazing leaders. Hi, Heather. We're so glad that you're here. It looks like Lori's here. Kelly's here. Carissa. Carissa. Oh, my goodness. Your sister Carissa. Julie's on with me. Oh, yes. Carissa. Remind everybody how you and Carissa work together with Ellen Hudson. So you're together, oh, right? Well, that um, ended up being one of those things where I um, would, what do you call it? Stock Carissa on um, with Studio Calico. I loved okay. her designs. And when Ellen was in need of adding another team member to help with um, projects on the blog, I said, oh, Chris Wiley, she, I love her stuff. Um, let's ask her. And so we got to actually meet her at, then it was called CHA. Now it's called- uh, Creativation, uh, right? Creativation. Right. Creativation, yeah. Um, so we met her at CHA and just kind of fell in love with her and we're like, Come, come. And and I when I say we, I say that because Ellen and I are such close friends. A lot of people think that somehow I'm like part owner of Ellen Hudson. And it's like, no, 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 no. I'm <laughs> Ellen's buddy. <laughs> yeah. That's a good, that's a good position to be in, right? I'm her I, buddy. I, met... I work with her. And when I go, ooh, I love this or I love this person's art style. Um, if you're looking for somebody, maybe this would be a good fit, you know, and so. And luckily, Krista was a fantastic fit, and uh, and it went from there. And, and uh, over the years, I've gotten to know Krista and hang out with her at CHA. And yeah, and yeah. our of course amazing owner. First of all, again, shout out to all craft companies owned by amazing women who said, "I'm going to yes. figure this out, and I'm going to be bold and 
and fruitful in it, by the way. Our amazing owner, Kennery, joins us today, and she's shouting great lovelies to you and is so excited oh, that you joined Kennery, the design hi. team. Is this your first time with Pink Fresh Designing, or have you guested with us before? Um, I've been a guest Instagram uh, hopper and blog hopper, um, and I've always been a fan of Pink Fresh's uh, stamps and dyes and now you've got the stencils and and now you have inks and it's like wow you're just growing 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 and, and I now know, foils yeah I mean and now it's one of everything foils. right and oh my gosh I love foils because they just it gives me the vapors I love it so much <laughs> You know what? I've gotten more uh, confident in it, so much so that two weeks ago with my host, uh, with my co-host, Betty Wright, uh, um, an amazing card designer out of uh, North Carolina, we foiled live. And today, Julie and I just turned on the foil machines because we're going to try to foil live again. Makes us yeah. both a little nervous, but we're going to yes. do it to show you how easy it is. And we want to make sure that you know that uh, all of these products are available, special sales. Watch Heather in the comments because she'll tell you all about them. Now, Julie, before we get started onto our desktops, and I give you a moment to move your camera down, I don't want to I don't want to throw your game off, but we also, besides Carissa, besides Heather moderating, besides the boss, Kennery being here, the woman of my heart, Laura Basson, is also uh, watching us. So... I'm just saying, and we've jumped, we've jumped an additional 40, 71 people watching because everyone's sharing the video like they should be, oh, which is that's awesome. So sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Laura Basson's here, everybody. So we've got to be good. We've got to pull out the colors and make it good. Julie and I decided we were gonna just be bombastic with some yellow today. And yes. so we both have decided to bring out our yellow ink pads from Pink Fresh Studio. By the way, they're on sale. So if you're a full set person, let's get to it. Heather will tell you all about that. And uh, hey, Julie Ebersol, let's go down to our desktops if you don't mind. All right. I'll give you a moment. All right, I'm gonna shift. I'll you. cover for you. Hang tight. As as you move down. Hey everybody, you're watching the Craft Hour here at Pink Fresh Studios YouTube channel. You're a member of the Pink Fresh Studio audience, and I need to know if you're new. If you're new, do hashtag new. And if you've got a question for Julie and myself, hashtag question. And guess what? Heather, myself, or Julie will answer it for you as we get to know our friend, Julie Ebersol. play with some yellow, play with some florals and some foils all today. So uh, let's do that. Let me switch our view up just a little bit so everybody can see both of us. We'll switch to gallery you got view. Wide screen there. You are, hey, I'm just saying you got a perfect shot there, sister. Woo! You are all set. Um, all, right. all right, let's switch to uh, my desktop. Julie and I, I'm getting braver people. I used to only do whoever the designer that is with the show with me does, but today I'm doing something a little different. So Julie, I'm going to hand it over to you. What products are you using today? Uh, okay. I am working with this uh, beautiful stencil. It's called the uh, Fancy Floral Print. And I've also got this amazing, whoops, I should have shown that. Um, it's a series of six stencils, and I really love the fact that each one of them are lab labeled there in the top left corner, so you know what uh, what series of sequences um, that you're going to be working with them and putting them down in. So that upper left corner is like, oh, yes, awesome. And then I've got the thank you so much foil. This is going to be so pretty when it's done in foil. And then there's also a coordinating die that matches and it will cut that piece out. And I always like to, uh, of course, foil first and then die cut out because it's so much easier to see what you're doing. Um, maybe one day I'll get brave and die cut it first and then try to foil it, but I just don't think I'll get very good results that way. So foil first, then cut. So. I totally understand. And off camera for me, the Glimmer Hot Foil system is totally brewing like a good cup of coffee and heating up my thank you so much foil plate. So I wanted oh. to get that uh, started off camera. And today I am going to be using the Garden Floral Set. Now I want to tell you something before we get started. You know, being a brand ambassador for uh, Kinnery and Pink Fresh Studio, we get samples before they're out in the market because they love for us to try it. So today, one of my stencils uh, was a sample that the um, team sent me that I need to do something a little bit differently. When I get to it, I'll explain what's going on, but I need to re, um, I, need, I need to adjust the stencil a little bit. But don't forget what Julie said. Everything is lined up at purchase and that was fixed when it was mass produced. So uh, you may see me 
um, futzing with it just a little bit, if you will. But I assure you that it was because I get a it's Julie. It sounds like I'm humble bragging, but I'm just. No, you, d- you got you when you know what? We all re- we get prototypes, right? Yes. And our yes, job yep. is to figure out the kinks in the prototypes before they go to production. So, um, you know, it's good to have somebody who catches it and then says, hey, 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 hold up. You know, we got an issue right. here before we get it going. And, and hopefully we catch them all. I mean, we don't always, but we try our best to catch them all before that happens. And it, a lot of eyes have to be a looking out for, yeah, a lot of eyes go into it. And even then sometimes, you know. So Julie, a uh, graphic design background, what was your background that got you started in this industry that you've made a living off of it? Hey, y'all are gonna like die over this, but I actually was a former high school Spanish teacher. Oh. <laughs> and and um, I did not study art. I did not study illustration or graphic design or any of that. I'm completely self-taught and had to go just when I first started, I, I started learning a little bit about uh, stamp production behind the scenes and how to take art that was already done and get it plated and, and create the die lines and everything for that. And then when Ellen said, hey, I want to do my own line, would you be interested in trying this and started illustrating things? Um, I'm a very slow artist. I'm a slow maker. <laughs> But I get there in the end. I'm like a little turtle. But um, that's how I got to where I am now. And I, I wish, in hindsight, looking back and how, how my career has started out as a Spanish teacher and then ended up in, in this industry, um, I wish I had studied graphic design formally. But okay. it is what it is. And I picked it up along the way and spent a lot of hours teaching myself, which any of anybody who's out there aspiring to become a graphic artist or an illustrator, do yourself uh, a favor and take some professional courses that will save you so much time. (laughs) Just saying. Yeah, it'll just save you time. And instead of searching and trying to piece everything together on your own, it is well worth the investment to get if that's you know where you're you're really wanting to get into, you know, get the professional training that'll help you uh, speed up that process. So, but anyway, yeah. So um, I had just a slight boo-boo, so I'm gonna start all over on my green, but that's fine. We're doing it live, live stamping. Uh, You were telling me during our, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Well, you were telling me during rehearsal that um, we need to remind everybody who maybe doesn't play in the space all the time by making videos. You were talking a lot about the end result and the magic of the end result. What do you stand behind firmly when people talk to you about messing up and um, what it's like when we when we make these things for Instagram and social media? What's the reality well, of what's happening? The reality is we go through a lot of experimentation and things don't always go the way you had the idea in your head. Actually, where's my, I'm looking for a magnet here to hold this down. Um, Things don't always go as planned and you end up showing on Instagram and on your blog and in YouTube, the thing that did work part, partly the reason why I don't often show mistakes is because I really don't want to know what went wrong. Just show me what went right. So I can get to it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right yeah it's like i don't have any time to to mess with the stuff that went wrong just tell me the right way to do it and then i'm good i'm i'm fine so um but yeah there's a lot of experimentation in designs to make sure that uh things are going the way you had in your head and then you have to stop and make adjustments and figure out make notes you know i'll sit there and go oh a lot of times before i do anything on youtube i do a a prototype to see how it's all going to play out. You would not believe how many color combinations I've put together on my own that were total fails. And then I had to revamp it and come up with something better, you know, because it's like, I'll look at it and go, well, I think that's going to work, but I don't know until I actually make it. Sure. Now, when it's not something that you've made where you know the outcome and somebody um, some companies allow us to uh, pick from the new releases that are coming out, but I've also gotten um, 
a moment or two, it happened recently, I won't name with who, where I uh, feel like it's sort of a uh, the Great British Bake Off baking challenge where they send me an array yeah. of stuff that I sometimes can't see the forest for the trees um, because it's all trees in yeah. front of me and I don't know yeah. how to make it into a beautiful forest. What is your process when it comes to getting a kit of some sort that you weren't in on the design creation of and you think to yourself what the heck am I going to do with this <laughs> well the first thing I go to do is is look to see if they've got any of their in-house designers uh finished projects that I can take a look at and see what they've done now sometimes that isn't always the case because you know a lot of times it's down to the wire right um but I like to see what their team has done with it just so I have an idea of where, what was the intent behind this? If it's not clear from the get-go um, what the intent was. Now, a lot of times, most products I find it's pretty clear. Um, or maybe I've just been doing this for so long because I I left teaching when I was about, oh gosh, it was must have been about almost 25 years ago to do okay. this. And so I've been doing this for so long that in most cases, and this is going to sound really, really um, rude, but okay. I've seen it all. Sure. I've seen it all. And, so, you know, there's and, nothing new under the sun, but, and most of the time I can figure out, Ooh, that's looking good. Okay. And uh, you can figure out, um, I'm sorry, Miss figure... Heather, this is, Olive, and now I'm moving on to Lemon Whip uh, for the first flower here on mine. Um, but I bet you've seen th some things also come back around, Julie. Yes, I have. And, and it's kind of funny because like, I, like we were talking earlier about music and I said, you know, I'm a child of the, of the 70s and tie-dye was huge. Yes. And yes. guess what? It's coming back. Yeah, and it's now uh, tie dye, tie dye, and pastels is huge, right? Uh, versus you know extreme primaries, but the cooler right. and more pastel driven, lighter oh, and you uh, tie dye see effect. Some beautiful ombre type tie dye that just wow, it looks great. So it's got a refresh, right? Right, right. right. But uh, but it's looking amazing, and I cannot help but like gravitate towards that stuff. And I know. Although you'll never get me into bell bottoms ever again. You're not so. doing it. You, one no. tour with bell bottoms was enough for Julie Eversall. Yep, that was it. Uh, I'll never do it again. But uh, right. yeah. There's the tour with some lemon whip. We love that citrus yellow and green. So glad that we had Miss Julie ask us to do some playful yellows today. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the craft hour. I'm your host, Jeff. And my camera isn't turning on. Let's figure that out. That's oh no. Well, I'm just uh, cruising. There we go. Hi. 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 <laughs> Julie, that made me panic for just a second. Are you back? Um, hi. Yes. Woo. You guys hey. behind the scenes, it wouldn't be a craft hour show without some technical glimpse. But uh, you're watching the craft hour. I'm your host, Jeff Lindbergh. Catch me at Mr. Holy. Jeff Lindbergh. If you're new here, give us a hashtag that says hashtag new. And if you're a fan of Julie, let's, let's drive another hashtag. Let's do hashtag Julie, show her how much uh, you've come to see her. And of course, if you're catching us on the replay, please comment, show us. I will go in and comment with every person that is on one of the craft hour videos, new or old. Uh, be sure to check out Jennifer McGuire two weeks ago. I'm sorry, almost a month ago. And Betty Wright from North Carolina last week. We had so much fun with Pink Fresh Studio products. My guest right now, Julie Ebersol, many Hi. platforms and companies you can catch her on. And we're playing with yellow. So I hope you're having yes. fun again. Hashtag new, hashtag if you're here for Julie and uh, share in the comments. Cause as you know, at the end of the show we always give away a gift card from Pink Fresh Studio which is even more fun. All right, I need to get back to work you guys. I don't have time to talk to you because I've got, <laughs> I've got to foil. I've got things to do, so I let's get back to another to the foil part. I'm still doing all the stenciling part because this gives me confidence when I get to the stenciling, or I mean to the foiling that, okay, at least this part is finished and it looks all pretty. Right. And then I can move on to the foiling. And then if it's a fail, well, I still got this part done. So yeah, and I it's going to look great. 
refoil. So yeah, well, I'm just coming my in friends, with some. Blue. Yeah, what colors are you using, my friend? Well, what right color? now I grabbed a blue, and this is Ocean Breeze, and I think I might have mixed it with a different blue when I was messing around with colors, and then so now I'm getting a beautiful blend of two, possibly two different blues here of pink fresh but it looks really good so i'm not yeah. going to complain i like it i have been playing with so many blues and corals and reds oh. with pink fresh that it was nice to break out the yellows today so when you showed that on our rehearsal i was thinking perfection because this is really nice look at that gorgeous I don't and know how many and, pieces are in your stencil, but I've got like six layers I'm doing here. I'm a fiver today. I'm a five fiver on a stencil, but my stencil uh, number three will slow me down for just a second. And friends, on this sweet mustard, I'm going to go a little heavier because when I uh, practiced uh, prior to, because, you know, when you've got Julie Ebersole on the show, you get your act together and you do a dry <laughs> run on your own. Uh, and so, and Julie so Ebersole I figured... always does a dry run. So just so you know, <laughs> well, good. Even the pros do a dry run. I always do a dry run. Julie, uh, what other forms of entertainment are you connected to? Are you a book girl, a movie girl, a Netflix girl? What do you, um, what do you got going on as far you as your, that I am, uh, I love to read, but I have a terrible, because I'm a very linear sequential person, if mm -hmm. I start a book, nothing else will get done until that book is finished. Oh, and goodness. This okay. Is, this was really, really a bad habit of mine. And so I haven't read anything in years because of this terrible affliction I have that means I can't do anything else until I finish the book. So lots of things go <laughs> go undone and so I've made a point of like okay if I'm going to read anything it's got to be short and sweet but I haven't picked up a book in a long long time now as far as entertainment goes movies I'm a huge huge Marvel movie fan I love, oh. love Iron Man I love that whole series you know I I recently watched a WandaVision. Oh my goodness. I could go hours on WandaVision. Julie, thank you for helping pay my pension. I appreciate that. <laughs> that, mean, that means a lot. Uh, so really quick, folks, before we get into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which I can uh, tell her my story about, this is the stencil that I'm going to slow down a little bit on. As you can see, these are shadow accents. And this little guy was uh, printed just a little bit wrong. It needed to be a little... Um, it needed to be changed in the stencil. But that doesn't mean that I don't have a bad product here. In fact, I just have to slow down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up perfectly where I really want that depth and shadow to go. And I'm gonna try to take my time, block out just a little bit and give it um, a little bit more attention to detail. So you'll see me getting a little more intentful than you really have to be with this particular stencil in real life. Uh, so, um, Julie, I will tell you, yes. I know as a proud musketeer, I am supposed to immediately glom onto the, um, the cinematic universe known as Marvel, but it was <laughs> a little out of my reach uh, as far as understanding. I couldn't, I couldn't quite get behind the fact that people uh, in mass city fight scenes were all perishing, that coffee shops were blowing up and that we weren't pausing for a minute to see the mass destruction of whatever villain was plaguing the city at the time. And I will tell you that even though I had fallen asleep in many of our company's movies, <laughs> that there was something about the accessibility, the introduction, the timing, the nuance of WandaVision that made me fall in love completely with the Marvel Cinematic Universe more as a whole. Even though I had seen things, there was something very accessible about WandaVision. Do you agree? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the thing about the Marvel Universe is it's about good versus evil, right? And yep. good will triumph. And that there are heroes that have flaws, you know, they are human. Um, they have weaknesses like 
every human does, you know, we tend to think of our heroes as being, you know, perfect and, and they're not. And I, as far as WandaVision goes, I loved how they developed the, you know, her grieving process and oh, how so beautiful. It, it was, yeah, it was very, very well done. And at first I thought, you know, maybe if you were not a Marvel fan and did not know the story behind all of it, you might not grasp the, the, her pain entirely um, of where she was coming from. They did a pretty good job of bringing in um, those characters from her past so that you could understand. Um, but I, I would hope that it would inspire more folks to go ahead and watch the, if they weren't already familiar with the rest of the Marvel universe to go ahead and explore it because I'm just such a huge fan. It's something I've enjoyed with my kids. I never read the comic books. My brother okay. was a comic book collector, but I never did get into comic books as a kid. But when the movies came out, when Iron Man came out, I was hooked. I was just hooked right there with the idea of this, this guy who was so self-absorbed and cocky and then realized he had this power to become a force for good. And that's where, yes. she, and that's where he directed it. And I'm like, you know, we all have it within us. We all have it within us to be a force for good. And so uh, when I'm always stopping and assessing, I, I know that sounds kind of like weird and bizarre and who does that, but I'm a nerdy girl that does that. I stop and say, you know, how can I be a force for good? Or what am I doing that is contributing to the good? Right. So, right. So that's kind of, you know, the thing that I love about Marvel is it's like, well, you know, I'm, I don't have any superpowers, but I can, you know, make a little difference a little bit with my little self somewhere in some way, um, which is something I, which comes back to my career as a teacher. I always felt like I was telling somebody this the other day. I said, you know, of all the things I ever could have done in this world, I know that for me, the best contribution I ever made was to be a teacher oh, so that's, that's beautiful that uh yeah but in so many ways Julie you're still a teacher the artistry of uh educating and how uh one feels better and more confident and whatever studies they are learning about you are a natural teacher you know what I mean so in a way you didn't really abandon that gift no, um, no, I did not. And thank you for saying that. I really love, I think a lot of it just comes down to when you love something and you like to share it, um, that just kind of brings about a natural uh, desire to teach it, teach what sure. you know, share what you know. Sure. Well, my friend, a hundred people are here for you. The chat is going what? wild for hashtag Julie. Um, so many great comments. Again, I will jump on and say hi to everybody in just a few minutes. For now, uh, I'll move over to my fresh pair doing a light little uh, green um, uh, to kind of soften up. It's almost sort of a, a mint look, look or feel to it. Um, and it'll provide some depth to my vines or my stems, not my vines, my stems that I have going here. And uh, I just want everybody to know that um, we're having a blast with the craft hour. Share us. Make sure you tell other people that uh, you're watching the show. Get more people here in the room with us to have fun. Lori Spitzer says, yes, Julie, you are still a teacher. And think about the impact of all the cards that you've made. Um, uh, Teresa says, well, I've never gotten into Marvel and Heroes as a kid. I was into romance and love stories. My oh. comic books were, um, of course, Veronica and Archie. Oh, <laughs> I love those too. That's, that's always good. So... Uh, one last closeout on Marvel before um, they start charging us, or maybe they should they they should pay us for our endorsement. Um, I'll Hi. I'll call somebody. Uh, tell me, uh, are you, uh, you? Did you say Tony Stark? Who are you? Who are you picking as uh, your? Who, who are you fangirling over the most in the cinematic world of Marvel? You know, I have to admit, I am a, I really love um, Thor because okay <laughs> because. Yeah. Not because, you know, he's a hunk. I mean, yeah, he's a hunk. He's a, he's a lovely thing to look at. But 
because he has a sense of humor that just cracked me. It's one of the things I really liked about the, the Tony Stark character is that he he's always poking fun at something uh, and just this sense of humor that they at both of the actors that play those roles bring to their characters just just cracks me up you know the, sure. and that's what I loved in in the end game I hope I'm not giving anything away but fat Thor was like <laughs> the best thing ever fat Thor so it's almost like he um, became even more relatable when he had to yeah, exactly to exactly right because he yeah. felt like he had failed he was not worthy and um and so he just let everything go and it's like oh no it's like don't do this to yourself you are amazing (laughs) you are awesome don't you know don't think that way about yourself and so it took him a while you know to come out of that and thankfully the rest of the heroes came in and uh saved him um by Go ahead. Show, uh, hold up your uh, your finished stencil there for just a second, so everybody Ooh. can see it just a little closer to your camera. Yeah, perfect, my friend. That's looking so good. Uh, it's, and then this, this is one an is unusual mine. color combo for me. I don't normally dip into yellows um, and blues like this, but um, yeah, I like. Whoa, I'm so proud of yeah. myself trying. Fun it. with yeah, fun with yellows today, everybody. I love it um let's see daniel diaz is here hi daniel we're a proud supporter of your show as well be sure to check out him and erica on their show good friends of the show as well uh julie and i are heating up our uh, glimmer i'm i'm using the spellbinders glimmer hot foil system she's a gemini girl so we are uh, getting those uh cake and bacon for just a second and i'll talk to y'all for just a moment while we are um uh, waiting while well, i'm waiting i don't know if i i had to turn I, I've just off because i was worried on. Yeah. I just powered mine on so I could go ahead and get this set up while it's preheating. So. All right, everybody, my camera will come back on in a second. I'm noticing that's the one thing on this new Canon download that I just got is that it turns me off if I'm not talking directly at you guys. Hi. Hi, I'm back. How are you? Oh, I'm hi. Dick Lindberg. I'm, the, <laughs> I'm the host of the Craft <laughs> Hour. That's Julie Ebersol. We are having a blast with uh, Pink Fresh Studio products. Uh, let's check in with the comments for just a few minutes and make sure we're doing well. We're currently at half hour. Oh, please. We're doing fine. We're only a half hour in. Julie, oh, got another half hour losing. with me. Hey, Betty Wright is here. If you haven't seen her episode of the Craft Hour, she was on two weeks ago, and she has every craft hack you could possibly imagine. Betty Wright has thought of a hack. She's She's tried to figure it out. And she does it so casually, she doesn't even tell you about it unless you're hosting a show with her. And then you see that cool thing that she just did. And you say, I want to do that. That's a really good idea. Uh, Dee is here, another amazing crafter, as well as a uh, a member of the Pink Fresh Studio team. Hi, Dee. Still waiting for you to be on the show, sis. I'm going to bug you until you say yes. Oh. Your friend Julie, and she'll tell you that it's not bad. Uh, Robin says, I'm totally loving all the Marvel. Uh, I see it on Disney Plus. Again, thank you for paying my pension. Uh, and you need to do the, um, we need to do a pink fresh cruise when COVID is completely over, a few days of straight crafting. Can you imagine a pink fresh studio cruise with the likes of Julie Ebersol, Carissa Wiley, D? Maybe we can get Daniel and Laura from Germany. Maybe they'll come and sail out oh, for us. Oh, man. Julie, that are you a cruise insane. girl? Oh, Sika's you know here what? too. I, I oh, have to oh, I love Sika. Hi, Sika. I How are you, my admit. love? Oh, hi, Sika. So you have to admit, I interrupted you. I I'm have sorry. to admit, I was I was booked for a cruise to Alaska. It's going to take my husband. It was going to be our 35th wedding anniversary celebration. And the pandemic kind of gotcha. wipe that out yeah and now you know after seeing that cruise ship that was floating around all that time and they wouldn't let them dock oh. and and i was just, it just broke my heart i was like oh my gosh these poor people are trapped on this boat they can't get into a port and that just kind of really scared me i think it and scared you a little bit huh it scared me quite a bit because um you know, you're in such close quarters and I'm claustrophobic as it is. And so the idea that I would have to be, I mean, I'm an indoor person, right? I'm not an outdoor person. I'm not the girl you'll find out there hiking and 
doing the four wheel thing and all that, you know, ATV, whatever stuff. I'm an indoor girl, but those tiny cabins, if I had to be confined to that tiny cabin, you know, day after day, I just don't know how well I would do. And that, it just made me nervous, so nervous that I just don't know if I could ever go on a cruise again, but I would go to a retreat, you know? Well, Julie, that's why you got to come crafting on the Lido deck with us. That's why I get out of that room. You know what I mean? All right. Well, I'm starting the timer on uh, mine. What you got going? You got, do you have some hacks oh. going on? Or do you have some different things that oh. you do with uh, your Gemini? I just, you know, I have a tendency to, um, I'm always afraid I'm going to burn my fingers. So I'll grab this like this because it's magnetic. It's going through the thing there and holding on to it. And then I can go ahead and place that down on my surface. You know, there's a lot of, it's like you said about Miss Betty, um, you do things out of a force of habit and you don't realize that it's some sort of a, a hack or a trick or a, a something. And I do things so automatically and uh, that I forget that, oh, other people may not be aware of doing it this particular way and that it might work better for them than what they're currently doing so sure, oh, sure the buzzer's going off okay wish me luck all right it's good luck live on camera everybody i'm telling you foiling is fun but it's not for the faint of heart when you're live on a youtube channel i'm just i'm just telling you right now um and my timer is ready to go so wish me luck as well here we go everybody Remember the great thing about foiling um, is that if you overfoil, um, then don't worry because with a simple eraser, uh, you can get rid of uh, some of that foiling. I've actually stopped doing two runs through uh, with my Glimmer hot foil machine by um, Spellbinders um, just because I don't want to overfoil. So let's see how it does. And uh, right. I don't do I've I don't typically do two passes. I just kind of figured out and it does, is a bit of trial and error to figure out um, the amount of time and the amount of heat. And I always start with the manual, what the manual suggests and then take it take it from there. So and don't don't forget everybody. Betty also uh, gained got me a little more confidence too. You can see on mine that um, a there's a little bit of overfoiling. B there's a little off centering. I could have been a little bit more serious about that or aligned it more. But what Betty reminded me of is if you go with a bigger sheet, you can always cut it down, and then you can get exactly what you want, right? Uh, this particular thank you so much comes with a die cut available to it. So you're going to see me line that up. And I won't have to worry about that over toilet. Did you do okay? Look at that. Fantastic. Beauty, Beauty. Yep, that's turned why out she, great. She didn't, she didn't, please. I'm glad I gave my point of view because look at that. She could put that on the front of a card and she'd be done. <laughs> way, way to show off, Julie. I always like, off. I'm like monkey clapping whenever things turn out great. It's like, I'm monkey clapping. Woo. So Julie, uh, you and Carissa, Ellen Hudson must only hire people with infectious laughs. Oh. What, tell me about uh, the, tell me about what people say about your laughter on your videos. Do I am people... not sure why people are fond of my laugh. My family calls it a cackle. They're, okay. <laughs> they're always like, geez, you just cackle in a way there. And yeah, I guess. I have fun when I'm working and, and, or, and I have fun, I make fun of myself and sure. um, it's just, I don't know. The laughter is always a good way to, to go throughout life. Right. So yeah, totally. Um, I'm, I'm always trying to have a good time, whatever I'm doing. And, and when I'm delighted, I'm like, I'm thoroughly, truly delighted when things go well or okay so you don't want to know what happens when things don't go well <laughs> oh okay yeah we don't want to see that side of, lot of we don't want to see that side of julie yeah it's like uh curse words <laughs> all right so this thank you so much has a lot uh, that our little uh, uh poking tools will need to do so you'll see yeah i'm gonna run I this through my machine here pop through 
Hope everybody's having fun. Don't forget to comment along with us, engage, give us a little hashtag new, hashtag Julie, hashtag question, and we'll see you. Um, Heather, if I've missed any, if you could give me an update in the private chat, that would be awesome. Um, I hope that y'all are having fun. Um, I love that I'm doing this off to the side so you can't see it. That's not very helpful, is it? Uh, let's do that. And look, Betty was correct. Why did I panic? Because after the die cut, uh, happens. Who cares if you had overfoiling? Who cares if you were off center? Because look at that pink fresh die cut, making it just a little bit easier for you. Now, um, as you can see, um, when I did my rehearsal, I thought that I was going to try this in a yellow and sort of a greenish uh, aqua blue. And I diversified what you can do with thank you so much. I'm going to get rid of the so much just because it's uh, a very busy card as it is. So I thought the thank you would be a little bit more beneficial there as far as having it all. But I'll show you what, what, what it's shaping up there. It could work, but I would want to uh, kind of tone down my um, the amount of stuff happening behind there. So I thought I was, uh, I thought I would uh, kind of quiet that just a little bit by cutting out the so much. How about you, my friend? What you got going on? Well, I ended up... Um... I cut it out now. Originally, I thought about foiling directly on top of my uh, background here, but then I was worried that it would get lost against all that um, pattern in the background. So I went ahead and did it plain on white and then cut it out. And now to mount it, I love to 3D mount these things, but um, on my original, I had used pieces of foam tape and that is like... That is so, so tedious. It'll take you like 20 minutes to put on those little bitty pieces of- I know, how, does Laura, how does Laura Basson do it? What, what I is don't know. She's, she, I'm sure she patience. has a secret. We'll have to figure out how she does it because I can't, I don't have the patience for that. I'm one of those, and I want it done quick. I want it done fast. I like everything quick and fast. <laughs> I yeah. don't like, I don't like things that take me a long, long time. So um, what I did here is I die cut this, the frame of this um, about four or five times from cardstock and I glued them all on top of each other. And I have this piece of, um, this is a piece of chipboard and I wrapped it with press and seal. That yes, this miraculous. Is the Julie Ebersol secret if you have you don't know julie if you don't know how she does her chipboard so i'll i'll stop talking and uh, i'll put the screen view on you tell us about your little hack here because this is a so, julie special yeah this is like i i needed something that would hold these things down and not move around on me without me having to put my fingers on it to hold it or use tweezers to hold it hold it down so um this enables me to put one layer down of the die cut and then apply some glue and then come along and layer the next one on top without messing around and having it scooch all over the table and get glue everywhere. So even if the glue dries on this, um, I just take a baby wipe and wipe it off and it's good to go again. And so until this no longer is sticky, then I'll just use it over and over and over again and replace it when I need to. And it's just taped on the back, but it's the sticky side out. So that's what's using. It's like a, just a sticky mat, crafty sticky and I, mat. And I'm using these uh, thin strips from scrapbook.com and uh, I'm popping it up, giving it the Laura Bass and dimension is life that we were trying to avoid. But unlike um, my friend, Julie, uh, I don't have so much to do. So um, I have a little bit of an easier uh, time. So I am taking a moment to do some foam tape. And then I just noticed I might need to clean up the size of my actual card um, because I want to give it some frame mat look uh, to give it just some extra love. So uh, there's how I'm going to provide the dimension. I don't know if you can see that on camera, um, but yeah, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to come back to the comments, everybody, but I want to show you this really quick. I'm going to grab my uh, steel dies over here, my A2 layering set. Uh, this is from Waffle Flower, and I'm going to pick out a size. 
and cut this down because I think that I'm going to mat card, mat it up with a little um, yellow. I think I'm going to do a yellow uh, card base. That's so good of you because one. I normally, uh, white is my safety zone, plain white mm -hmm. cards, everything white is so much my safety zone that I always tend to stick to that instead of trying something, you know, like yellow as the yeah. base. And I should do that more often. I just, for some reason, always go with white. I recently uh, said something publicly on, on the scrapbook.com live handmade podcast. Uh, be sure to check it out. I would love uh, for you to hear my episode. Um, my friend Leah Lawson also did an episode with them, but I admitted that I was anti-critter and caused quite a stir because Ooh. I uh, don't oh, enjoy- anti-critter. I... I'm not anti-critter, <laughs> but I'm tired of critters. Oh, you are? Okay. Is that one of those... I'm like, okay. I'm like, <laughs> I, I got enough critters. I mean, I don't know how many more critters I really need, but, um, <laughs> but I, yeah, I, boy, I could like, I'm not anti-critter, but it's like, I really don't want any more critters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the good news is that, um, you know, working for Pink Fresh Studio, they are not about critters. They have some critters during the holidays, but I kind, right. of, like, um, I kind of like working for my friends at Pink Fresh because uh, it's it's more my style and I can have just a little bit more fun. So yeah, right, I'm going to try this uh, sweet mustard paper from Gina K. Let me see if I have it written down for you like a good craft communicator that I am to tell you exactly what color this is. And what is it? Buy. These are all the colors I used just in case um, I didn't. Mm -hmm. Mm. Friends, I, mm. this is phone book. This is phone book from our friends uh, over at Brutus Monroe. Okay, um, so that's going to give me a little dimension. Ooh, that turned uh, out. But I need, I'm going to need some more dimension because, again, trained in the House of Bassin. Uh, so I'm going to pop that up <laughs> one more time. We go through tons and tons of phone tape, right? Like we somebody do. will look at me and I'll have like the largest scotch 3m foam tape roll known to man and people are like oh my and i'm like you know i'll blow through this so fast it'll make your head spin i love sure. to things up. and you actually got to pick up a few more gigs to pay for it or put an extra mortgage out on your house but uh, like we do love it <laughs> we do <laughs> And He's I like, love that every time that somebody is going to tell me the where they found it for cheaper um, on a link that people throw around, suddenly I go to do that same link and it's um, long been gone oh, or yeah. it's double the price. Sold out. Sold out. All right, look at that, first of all. We don't really need to do much with that. That is just a no, really nice... No. But look over at Julie's uh, side of the world. That is screaming elegance but it's screaming pink fresh elegance that is classic pink fresh right there uh, looking bold and tell me what you were saying about two things one join me on our color fury that's going to be our new marvel <laughs> character color fury uh, but tell me tell me about how you and i what you and i think about picking colors real quick oh like okay so I really suck at it. So I have a Pinterest board called Color My World. Whoops, sorry. Bump the camera. I always talk with my hands. My students used to always like grab my hands and go, okay, now try to speak, senora. And I'd be like, <laughs> I can't talk without my hands. So, um, but anyway, I have a color uh, board on Pinterest where I just find a pleasing color combination and I throw it up there. And then when I get stuck, I will go and look at that because I have such a hard time picking colors that coordinate. And I know that you can study color theory and you can buy a color wheel and all that. But for me, it's just, it's what makes my eyes happy. If that makes sure. my eyes happy, that's a good combo. And that's the only rule I need to know. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm such a, oh, what do you call it? I'm a deviant <laughs> when it comes to color theory. 
<laughs> Julie, why don't uh, you take a moment to uh, bring that back to your face and I will uh, get a line to the comments. Oh, where is and, my uh, We will have some fun with the peeps in case you have some questions. Uh, we got, we're getting good reviews on our, on our uh, makes, which is good. Uh, hey everybody. I'm, I'm hoping that you're having fun with the craft hour. The best part of this gig is that I get to meet people that I've long admired today. I'm joined by Julie Ebersall, who, um, I've, uh, I fell in love with her cackle as she's told us. And now that I've spent the hour with her, I've uh, loved her conversations as well. Can we have coffee the next time I'm on your coast? Uh, totally. <laughs> I don't craft without coffee. So Dan and myself, of course, uh, can't do a European travel this year. So we have decided we are going to do a Seattle, a Portland into a relaxing four day Palm Springs. However, could we pick a hotter time this summer than to go to Palm Springs? But we miss it so much. But I've never been to Seattle or to Portland. So I'm oh my excited. Gosh. Well, coming in the summer months is a good time because the rest of the year, it's kind of cloudy and gray. It doesn't bother me. I don't mind the rain sure. and I don't mind cloudy days. Those are the best days for photographing my cards. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> but um, Seattle area in the summertime is just fantastic. It doesn't usually get overly hot. I can only think of one or two times where we actually had a heat wave in Seattle in the summer, and that was years ago. So, you know, it'll get in the 80s, maybe the 90s, but typically summertime, great time to visit Seattle area. Yeah. Uh, so uh, just really quick, those are asking about where you can follow Betty. Betty, if you're still here, hit us in the comments. She's also on my Instagram. So you can follow me on Instagram to say hi to Betty Wright. And uh, on her episode of The Craft Hour, she talks about where to find her. I can't remember it at the top of my head, but it's there. She's delightful. Uh, Julie, we'll talk about where to find you at the end of our show. But let's see. Uh, Julie says that uh, I'm such a joy to watch. Thank you. And I love that you love the guests that I bring on. Thank you for that. Um, L. Kelly says the Pacific Northwest is a great place to visit. And the food is so good, too, with a capital T-O-O, -O, which is awesome. E I agree. Um, Laura Basson would like to talk about your cute outfit, Miss uh, Julie Ebersol. <laughs> so where, tell us where you got it. Be an influencer. Uh, okay. Well, um, this... <laughs> My standard uniform is a pair of leggings, a t-shirt, and an apron. And I wear a full body apron when I'm working because I have a tendency to get stuff on my hands. I don't like stuff on my hands. And then I go like this. Ah, yes. And then I, I, my I remember so I that about you. You talked about that in a class once where you don't like stuff on your hands. No, I don't. So I, I got this apron. Um, I have it in a couple of colors. One is just kind of a gray, but um, this, this is, I found this at Cost Plus World Market. Okay. Yep. Originally, I'd found one in Japan and I loved it so much. And I wish I'd bought more when I was in Japan visiting my daughter. And then uh, happened to be cruising Cost Plus World Market, which is one of those places I like to go to look for inspiration, yep. anthropology and those kind mm -hmm. of websites. Um, I love to go there for inspiration. And um, I just came across the aprons. I was like, I must have that because of this of the back here and the yes. way it doesn't have, you know you just slip it right over your head and throw your arms through it and it's got pockets it's got pockets ladies that's important i hear which is good us gents always have our pockets uh yeah a lot of people are saying they don't like things on their hands as well and we're all crafters so i guess we got to kind of deal with that uh <laughs> <laughs> i love it um, so tell us really quick about uh, your daughter in Japan. What's this? What's the backstory there, real quick? Uh, my son-in-law is um, an officer in the Navy, and okay. he got stationed over in Japan for a, I don't know what you call it a, a tour, a tour okay. of three years in Japan. And so when my oldest granddaughter was uh, three years old, three or four, she might have been four. But so anyway, the to, I, yes, I have two oh granddaughters. The oldest one is eight and the youngest one will be two in May. So I, I've just got two and the, I love them oh. so much. And anyway, the, the second one was born in Japan. So I've been to Japan twice to visit them. Um, and when I was there, that's where I got this mug. 
This is okay. a Tokyo mug. This is a Starbucks from the Starbucks shop in, in Tokyo. And uh, anyway, Japan was just so amazing. I, if I were a single woman, I would move to Japan. In a heartbeat, right? In that a was heartbeat. supposed to be, I said European, but we were actually moving to our first Asian destination uh, if it wasn't for COVID. Um, so yeah. Hey, Julie, uh, first of all, we got 38 likes so far. I think that everybody in here needs to give us a like really quick. Show us some love by clicking that. And don't forget to subscribe <laughs> where you can. I wouldn't be a good host if I didn't remind you of those two things. And of course, comment. Um, and we've had over 141 people watch the show. 500 people have already played it back and started late. So we're doing darn tootin' good, Julie Eversall. You bring the party, which is awesome. Uh, I'm so I want to. I thought it'd be crickets. <laughs> I want everybody to also look at our friend Terry Godinez, who joined us, commented, and she also is getting the fifteen dollar gift card. So congratulations, Ooh, Terry! Yay! That's fantastic. Uh, don't forget that the uh, larger stamp uh, pads, the ones that I use today, are um, having a great discount to them. Runs through May second, I believe. Heather will have to correct me on that. But a good time, especially if you are in full uh, uh, full set syndrome like I tend to be, then please, please uh, be sure to check that out. Um, Sylvie is there. Betty, it looks like you are still here. So I hope that you shared where people can find you. My dear friend Amanda Panda is here. Um, Jackie Perkins says, I have an American pen pal in Tokyo and I'd love to go there someday. Oh, uh, Jackie, too. I love that you have a pen pal. That's yeah. awesome. That tradition oh, is and not in Japan. Lost. They're so crazy about stationery. They love stationery, and so having a pen pal in Japan, you lucky, lucky girl. <laughs> yes, yeah, you must get some amazing things. Uh, Teresa Hampton says she love, love, loves our cards. Will you show yours really quick, my friend? I'll hold mine up to the camera. Uh, we had fun with golds and yellows today. Let me uh, give you the spotlight for a second and. Uh, uh, share, share only you. Hold on just one second. It's just me. Hi. Let's pin Julie. Look at Julie's card. Look at that. Gorgeous. Been trying some new uh, camera um, ways of chatting with y'all today. Uh, and I hope you've enjoyed uh, the close ups. Miss Julie, did you have fun on the craft hour? I did. I was so nervous at first because I just, I don't know, just nervous. So sure. um, this was fun. <laughs> Awesome. Well, will you please tell your fellow designers, many that you're sitting on the team with today, that it's a safe place to be. We rehearse, we get it done, we talk it out, we have some fun, and there's nothing to be nervous about. No, you I'm made looking it at you. Painless, so I'm looking at I, you. And Dee. if I can do this, anybody can do this. Anybody. Amen. Amen. Uh, Karen says, beautiful cards. Julie, your hair is so long, Donna says. I... And then Laura Basson wanted to know that your hair is looking gorgeous. So you're oh. you're just you're just killing it with the looks today, Julie. Oh, thank you. Is your hair not usually this length, people who have met you um, before? For a long time, I wore my hair in a pixie. Okay. And then, yeah, I wore it in a pixie and it was great. And then I decided to grow it out because I got tired of having to work so hard on my okay. hair <laughs> and then it just kind of got longer and longer and then the pandemic hit and I couldn't go and get it trimmed and now I could probably go safely because I'm fully vaccinated Yay! yes our plug so, our plug um, to fully vaccinate not to get yes. political but we want this country to return so that Julie and oh, I can hug gosh. when we see each other in Washington yeah, well, we can because we're both fully vaccinated. Yep, I can hug you. Um, remind me, my dear friend, where can people follow along with the adventures of Julie Ebersol and learn more about your techniques as well as your designs? Um, my website is simply julieebersol.com. And on Instagram, my handle is uh, at J A Ebersol. So that's pretty easy. And it, it can find me on Facebook. I don't really do a lot with Facebook. I usually tend, right. I don't hang out a lot on Facebook, mostly because I just don't have time. And, uh, but my, I used to have a blog called Paper Truffles with a Z. Okay. And I'm having trouble right now getting Facebook to transition that to just my name. And sure. I haven't figured out how to get that switched over. So on Facebook, my page is just Paper Truffles. And you can find me that way, or you can find me if you just look up my name up in the 
Facebook and it will link you. Yep. I'll probably and take of it course, uh, when you want to check out your favorite Ellen Hudson products and designs, I uh, featured there regularly on YouTube, which is where <laughs> I fell madly in love with you. Julia Bersal, thanks for joining the Craft Hour. We appreciate it. I hope that you'll come back and see us. And I hope you've had Thank fun you. with Pink Fresh Studio this uh, release. Thank you for having me. And I hope everybody else had a good time. I did. Yes. Amen to that. All right, friends. Yeah. Thanks for joining the Craft Hour. We'll see you in about two weeks. Haven't picked our guest yet. D. You're up, sister. Until then, have a great weekend, everybody. Go get vaccinated and uh, go enjoy that Pink Fresh Studio uh, stamp pad sale that's going on. We'll see you later on the next Craft Hour. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, Miss Julie, you did it. 